Glass here with a finished object for you. I'm pretty excited about this one. Here it is. I'm gonna put it on for you. Can you see this? Okay, this is the Arika by Jane Richmond. A-R-I-K-A. And I love it so much. I was gifted this yarn from Fiber for the People, Taylor. It's called Kick Drum. That is the color, and it is her bulky base. And I had two skeins, so I went on a little hunt on my queue on Ravelry and found that I had tagged this pattern, the Arika, A-R-I-K-A, and I had enough yardage by one yard to make it. So I did. And I was so excited because it has this sort of navy blue, but look at those gorgeous sort of pinks and peaches in there so beautiful and it goes so well with so much of my wardrobe because I'm always drawn to sort of fuchsias and pinks and I love how this brings it out with these little speckled dots. What I love about this pattern is it goes by not too fast. Like you would think two bulky skeins, this little like shawlet situation, it would go pretty fast. It's on 10 or 11 needles, but it took me a couple, three nights, three or four sessions, which was really awesome. The beginning is just a very simple pattern and then it goes into the lace work. So I really highly recommend this project if you have never done lace because you don't really need stitch markers to keep track of where you're going. It's so easily memorizable and it's only every other row because the lace is only on the right side and then on the wrong side, you're not doing the lace, which is so nice, you get a little break. It's all about the blocking with this piece. So once you've done everything, you block it to the schematic. There's this really clear schematic in the pattern which shows how many inches, what shape it should be in. And so this is a really good time for you to probably invest in blocking boards and the pins if you haven't already done that. I didn't really look at the schematic. I just stretched it as much as I could, which was a mistake because then it was too long. So when I constructed it and put it together, this was kind of hanging down here in a low way. And I was disappointed that I hadn't paid more attention to the schematic, but I found a really quick fix, which I'll show you. I just folded the back as much as I needed to. So you can see right here, this is the edges of my folds. It kind of creates a little pleat. I actually think it's kind of a cool design detail. So on the back, you can see just a little fold over right in there. And this is dark yarn, so maybe you can't, but there's a little fold over there. And then on the back, it kind of has a pleat. See it right there? So I just sort of whip stitched it closed. I made it as tight as I wanted to in the neck. And I sort of love that it's right there and it's thicker, double thick, because I'm always cold and I always want something right there, just like right there on the back of my neck. And I love that it's doubled up right there in the back. I love how it fits me right over the shoulder, but you can style it any way. You can make it more kerchief-like, kind of like this, or more sort of outer shawl-like, almost, almost kind of has a poncho feel for me. The instructions are very detailed about the tassels. And so I was cutting and grouping exactly as she told me to in the pattern. And then I tried to have fun with the actual yarn. So when I was cutting, sometimes the whole strand would be of that lighter contrast and sometimes it would be all blue. So I just had fun pairing them together to see if I could continue the color work that was happening within the knit in the tassels as well. Isn't that cool? Once I had attached all of the tassels, which I would recommend having a crochet hook on hand to do that, I didn't and I kept getting frustrated, but I was too lazy to go find one. So I ended up using a knitting needle sometimes or sometimes my fingers. But once you're all done, I would recommend putting it on a flat surface and just trimming the, ta the tassels so that they're nice and even or as even as you can get them. So you just sort of spread it out and give it a nice cut with a really sharp scissor. I used my fabric scissors for this. And I think the result looks really nice and professional. She tells you how many strands to cut, which I did, but then I ended up wanting less. So I would suggest not doing that if you want to hold on to any extra yarn you might have, because I ended up with a sort of stack of these cut pieces that I didn't use in the tassels. And I felt really sad that I had cut 
perfectly good yarn, especially when I wanted to make a matching arica for my dog because then I was left with this tiny little ball and I had to make it stretch as much as I could, but it was enough and she looks amazing in her arica as well. I'll show you a little picture here. Yeah, she's nailing it. Actually, it's a little dark for her fur. It's a little dark for her complexion, but you know, it's all right. Thank you so much as always for checking in here with me at Christy Glass Knits. I love showing you my finished objects. There is an interview with Taylor, who is the dyer of Fiber for the People, linked underneath this video you can check out. She's an awesome dyer and has the most beautiful photos, so be sure to check her out. I'll see you next time here on Christy Glass Knits. Bye.